Hey folks, it's Christopher from Neon Captain, and Sean's asked me to create a quick video on um, the creation of a preset, and he even selected one for me to demonstrate, which is kind of nice. It's actually one of my favorites, and it leads to just a, a whole range of interesting exploration and just sort of uh, nice organic uh, radiator abstracts. So let's get started. I'm going to clear the radiator by holding down shift and hitting reset, and that brings the console to a default state. Then I'm going to make sure that uh, all the LFOs are off. And in the default state, uh, the only output is a circle from shape A, and you can see it here. So that's good because that's the base shape that we're going to use for the creation of this abstract. But and currently the circle's running at 100 hertz, and we want it a little bit slower than that. So I'm going to turn the speed dial counterclockwise uh, until we get to about 32 hertz. And it's a little flickery, but it's going to work out fine for the abstract. And then we want to start manipulating the abstract. And we're going to start with the uh, axis tilt in the transformer. And it just rotates the circle around the axis. Yeah, but we want to use that with an LFO. So I'm just going to hold down reset and uh, give that a little turn to re return it back to zero point. So let's take LFO 3. We'll turn it on, we'll hold down select, and then we're going to turn the axis tilt knob in the transformer. And what that does is it's going to route all the, the wave data out of LFO3 into axis tilt and make sure that we have the level turned up all the way and make sure that we have the LFO on. And then if we start turning this, we can see that the circle is rotating based on the waveform coming out of the LFO, um, but we want this to be pretty fast, so we're just going to crank this way up. And as we do that, you can see that the circle is going through some kind of interesting patterns, and um, those are going to be fun to explore later, but right now we just want to keep turning this until we get to a pretty fast speed. And I'm turning this to about uh, 589 hertz. Um, and you can play with that a little bit later to lock things in. And you can see already we're getting something that looks a little bit like the abstract uh, that Sean requested, but it's still not quite right. Uh, and that's because we need to add some additional rotation. So grab your rotation X and start giving that a turn. And you can see we've got this thing that's actually kind of three-dimensional. And if we turn this about, uh, I'm going to turn this to about 32 hertz. So I just keep turning it until uh, you get a nice stable harmonic. And you can see it's starting to pulse. And when it starts to pulse, that means that you're getting pretty close to a harmonic. And as you turn it, that pulse will get slower and slower until things just kind of lock into place. So that's, um, that's 32.79 hertz. And you can see that we're actually pretty close. So what we just need to do is fine tune some of these frequencies a little bit. So if you hold down the shift key, the radiator switches from uh, coarse to fine control. And now when you turn these uh, speed knobs, uh, you have a much greater uh, amount of granularity for control. And you can see now that we're, we're actually pretty close to what that abstract was. But we're just missing some color and some intensity modulation. So let's start with color. Uh, let's come over to uh, the color module in the radiator and we'll hit select because we want to make sure that we're in HSV mode instead of RGB mode. And then on the menu we can see the controls for the color section and we can use the select uh, dial to scroll around. And just make sure that your RGB mode is set to HSV 
And that, put, that puts the radiator into HSV mode as opposed to the more traditional RGB mode. And now take the value control, turn it all the way counterclockwise until we have uh, no output. Turn on LFO2 and hold the select button and then just turn the value knob a few turns clockwise. And what we've done is now we're assigning the output waveform of LFO2 to the intensity modulation in the uh, color section. So if we start turning the speed control, we can see the image fading in and out. And we'll just turn this level all the way up. And now we're just going to turn this for a while until we get a nice harmonic. And right now I'm using a sine wave, but make sure you experiment with, uh, you know, ramp waves and score waves and things like that, and just kind of find uh, whatever looks best for you. I'm just going to keep turning this until we get this sort of graceful fade in and fade out, nice and slow. Okay, so that's really cool. Now let's add a little color modulation. And if we take the output of LFO3 and map it to color, um, that will be, that will keep the color in sync with the way the shape draws. And so let's do that. Hold down select on LFO3 and then just give the hue knob a little bit of a turn and you let up on the select and then you can kind of dial the, uh, the palette a little bit and this control is pretty subtle and you just want a little bit of color control like that and now we've basically got that abstract uh, now we can use the uh, Z rotation control just to kind of expand it and unwind it a little bit. And you can see what that's doing. And that's a really graceful, nice organic uh, abstract. And now if you're driving this to music, you know, you can control it via the speed knob on the shape generator or the speed knob in the clone section or the rotates here or even here. So we can get some really cool stuff. And now when you've decided that you like it, just uh, turn the page bank until you get uh, some blank presets. Hold down shift and enter, and that'll put the radiator into store mode. You can see the modules are blinking and each of these blinking modules will be stored in a preset. And then just hit a preset number. And now that preset's saved and you can call it up and use it later. So I hope this has been helpful. Thanks a lot and have a great day.